세션을 진행하기에 앞서 먼저 이번 심포지엄에 관한 전반적인 기획 의도를 소개해드리고자 합니다. 이번 국제 심포지엄 미술관은 무엇을 움직이는가? 미술과 민주주의는 국립현대미술관 개관 50주년을 기념하는 첫 행사로 마련되었습니다. 미술관 설립 50주년을 기념하는 행사인 만큼 대한민국 현대사와 미술관의 성과를 함께 짚어보게 되었고 또 민주주의의 가치 실현이라는 것이 미술관과 현대미술에서 어떠한 의미를 갖는지 그 향방을 논의해보고자 이 자리를 마련하게 되었습니다. 이번 심포지엄은 두 축을 중심으로 기획되었습니다. 오늘인 첫째 날은 미술관학적 관점의 기반을 두고 미술관을 통한 민주주의의 실천에 대해서 논의하게 됩니다. 그리고 내일인 둘째 날은 미술사학적인 접근을 통해서 현대미술에서 민주주의가 재현되어 온 방식에 대해서 다룰 예정입니다. 특히 이번 심포지엄은 미술관, 현대미술, 민주주의의 관계를 국내 혹은 아시아 지역에 국한하기보다는 보다 넓은 초국가적 혹은 탈국가적인 관점에서 다루어 보고자 기획되었습니다. 따라서 서유럽 혹은 북미 중심의 관점에서 벗어나서 민주주의의 성취와 관련해서 여러 굴곡진 역사를 지닌 동유럽, 남미, 중동, 아프리카 지역의 국가를 포괄하고자 했고 따라서 다양한 지역의 연구자 및 현장 기획자의 발표를, 발표를 들어보도록 마련했습니다. 이에 관해 심포지엄 1일차인 오늘은 현대미술관의 민주주의 실천, 제도 혹은 기관, 사회정의, 행동주의라는 주제를 다루어 보도록 하겠습니다. 오늘은 미술관이 근본적인 관점에서 민주적 공간으로 기능할 수 있는 구체적인 실천 방안에 대해 논의합니다. 그리고 한발 나아가 제도권과의 타협을 거부하고 기관 밖에서 활동을 도모하는 행동주의 미술에 관해서도 살펴볼 예정입니다. 연사들의 강연이 끝나면 각 세션별로 토론과 질의응답이 이어지겠습니다. 그럼 첫 번째 세션을 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 이번 세션에서는 슬로베니아를 중심으로 살펴보는 동유럽 미술관의 현실 그리고 민주화와 그 가능성에 대해서 한번 다루어 보도록 하겠습니다. 그럼 지덴카 바두비나치 관장님을 모시도록 하겠습니다. 큰 박수로 환영해 주시기 바랍니다. 헬로우 uh, It's a great pleasure to be here in Seoul. It's my first, uh, second visit. The first visit was actually more than 10 years ago when Simon Conference uh, was here. I would like to thank uh, for inviting me, Sunny Young, director of uh, the museum, chief curator and research and publishing team here in uh, the museum. Uh, I will be talking about democratic museum, uh, coming from my own experience um, in Ljubljana, in the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art, Moderna Galleria. And I will start my talk uh, with a short introduction in, on uh, democracy versus uh, totalitarianism. To focus uh, uh, the focus of my presentation is on thinking about the museum in post-socialist world. The post-socialist world can be understood both as the region of the formerly socialist countries and generally as the world of today, the world after the presumed end of the cold world, the world of disappearing social ideas, in the first place, the idea of solidarity, which has been replaced by competition and individualism. I have been invited to the conference in Seoul to talk about the museum in the context of Eastern Europe, that is to say, the region of formerly, formerly socialist countries. There are many stereotypes connected with the socialist world, and of course, one of the strongest is the lack of democ democracy and democratic institutions. Here I should say at once that my ideas about the democratic museum have been shaped to a large degree, not only by contemporary thought, 
by the various and the various uh, urgencies of today, but also by emancipatory tradition of self-management socialism in the former Yugoslavia, where I was born. Democracy is probably one of the most abused words in recent history. When talking about Eastern European socialist past, I would like to stress, first of all, that socialism was not always totalitarian, as it now tends to be presented all too often. As early as in 1950, Yugoslavia started developing workers' self-management, a system that transformed, transfer, transferred the decision-making power from central state government to workers' councils. The system did not function all that well in the practice. In fact, it became an enormous bureaucratic machine, but an, as an idea, it remains a great inspiration and challenge to this day. The reason for the failure of socialism in Eastern Europe should not be sought solely in its ideas, but rather in inconsistency of, the, of their implementation. According, for example, to Susan Backmore's, socialism failed because it copied capitalism too closely. It is also necessary to stress that socialist countries differed substantially among them, with Yugoslavia being the most democratic, while the Soviet, Romanian, Albanian types of socialism could be described as totalitarian, and likely most similar to what we, we know of North Korea today. The ideology about the end of the Cold War would have us believe that democracy has triumphed despite the fact that many parts of Eastern Europe are currently ruled by authoritarian leaders, while the global society in general is under cybernetic control. The fact that totalitarianism is not exclusively a socialist issue and that democracy is not exclusively a capitalist asset was highlighted in, um, in, in the 1980s by, among others, the group Leibach, who were among the founding members of Neue Slovenische Kunst, which means New Slovene Art, one of the most significant multimedia art movements in Eastern Europe at that time. <clears throat> in 1987, Leibach recorded the track Geburt einer Nation, Birth of a Nation, which is essentially an appropriation of the song One Vision by Queen. When Leibach did, uh, what Leibach did was replace the English lyrics with German ones, thus underscoring the song's totalitarian spirit, which Freddie Mercury's fans tended to be oblivious of at the concerts. So for example, one man, one goal, one mission in German would be ein Mensch, ein Ziel, und eine Weisung. In the 19... 80s, Leibach performed and appeared in public dressed in uniforms, not only to direct attention to, to, the, to the totalitarian impulses in Yugoslavia of time, but also to make these same impulses more visible and recognizable in Western popular culture as well. Leibach purpose, purposefully over-identified with symbols and images of both socialism and capitalism, in both cases in order to underscore their power of manipulation. As we are in Korea, let me show you a very short clip from the video of their recent concert where they refer to their visit in North Korea in 2015. When I'm 
with her I'm confused, out of focus and bemused And I never know exactly where I am I'm predictable as weather She's as flighty as a feather She's a darling, she's a demon, she's a lamb performed in Pyongyang as one of the first foreign music groups to do so, they again opted for their method of over-identification and based their concert in, in an atmosphere of constant surveillance and control as well as censorship on one of Hollywood's kitschiest film, films, The Sound of Music. The choice of Leibach's way of pointing out that phantasms rule our world, especially the phantasms of happy family life and safe environment made possible by a strong father figure. 
The film focuses on sexual attraction between the strong authority figure of Captain von Trump and the novice nun Maria, who in her dilemma between love and faith chooses to fulfill her desire with the authoritarian men. The authoritarian leaders of the most isolated socialist Eastern European countries justified the isolation they imposed as protecting their countries from the corrupted, corruptive influences of decadent West. Claiming safety as an excuse is not only a tool of totalitarian socialist regimes, it is increasingly used by the democratic West. For example, by Donald Trump in the United States and by new authoritarian leaders in the formerly socialist countries in Eastern Europe, erecting razor wire fences on, and walls to protect their nation states from refugees. In these countries, the authorities, uh, the authorities are increasingly promoting a return to the values of traditional family consisting of mother, father, and children as the basis of the sound nation. In a view of all this, how can we think about the democratic museum in a time of growing cyber totalitarianism, nationalism, populism, raising fascism, and all this, how can we even distinguish between democratic and totalitarian impulses today? I will attempt to present my thoughts on this in terms of seven points of democratic museum, referring primarily to my personal practice at Moderna Galleria in Ljubljana, operating, so this is the main building, uh, operating since 2011 as two big units, the Museum of Modern Art in the original uh, building of Moderna Galleria and Museum of Contemporary Art Metelkova. So here I have briefly the seven points uh, of my thinking of democratic museum. Democratic museum does not hide uh, antagonisms under postmodern plurality, it takes a stand. Uh, the Democratic Museum is democratic not because it represents diverse positions, but because it is in relation with different positions that have an active presence. The Democratic Museum is a place of parallel narratives that create new complexities. The Democratic Museum is not a space of consensus, but a space of interference. The Democratic Museum strives for equal dialogue and partnership in the international sphere and thus produces new internationalism or transnationalism better, maybe. The Democratic Museum is the constituent museum. The Democratic Museum gives space of two different narrators who are present in their stories. So let me start with the first point. The Democratic Museum does not hide antagonisms under a postmodern plurality. It takes a stand. As one of the Slovenia, and you know Slovenia is one of the former six republics of uh, uh, Yugoslavia, uh, so uh, as one of the Slovenia's uh, central public institutions, the Moderna Galleria is expected to represent the interests uh, of the entire society. The more traditional segments of society understand this to mean the state, the Slovene people, the, and the country's most prominent artists. For the more left-oriented intellectuals, uh, this means we should be genuinely democratic and give space to different voices in society, especially those not usually heard. The, neo the neoliberals, meanwhile, say that we should create a space for elegant and glamorous urban gatherings and, if possible, present international stars. Serving all these interests is impossible and can only result in a patchwork of total diversities. The museum that tries to serve different tastes and expectations I call the mainstream museum, while the truly democratic museum can only be a critical museum. 
Both types of, a museum, of museum appear to strive for greater democratization. The difference, however, is that the critical museum does this to oppose the neoliberal total commodification and homogenization of different social spheres, while the mainstream museum does it to attract as many consumers as possible uh, to the museum industry. We consider, of course, uh, our Museum Moderna Galleria to be critical museum. Let me use the installation of the national collection in the Moderna Galleria, uh, Museum of Modern Art, to illustrate uh, this. In one of the rooms of the permanent exhibition of the national collection, the emphasis is on the imagery on which our collective memory is based. Here we present a chronology of the crucial events from the early 20th century until 1991, when the sovereign state of Slovenia was formed after the dissolution of Yugoslavia. The exhibited works of art pertain to various styles, socialist, realism, modernism, postmodernism, and there is also documentary material. The presentation includes as well two funerals. So the presentation includes also the uh, two funerals, the one you can see on your right, the, uh, the funeral of King Alexander Karadzorjevic of Yugoslavia in 1934, and that of lifelong president Socialist uh, of the Social Yugoslavia, Josip Broz Tito, who died in 1980. The timeline concludes with the Leibach video, Geburt einer Nation, that you can see on your right, the sh on the short monitor. Um, thus, rounded off the display in this exhibition room underscores the fact that national art is a construct informed by a cacophony of ideologies. Uh, here, the variety of materials and art styles is used to draw a map of collective memory. In the context of my talk, it is important to know that in today's Eastern Europe, programs catering to a variety of needs all come with ideology baggage. Consequently, freedom of choice in a cultural institution is related not only to consumer logic, but also to con correcting wrong, wrongs from the past. The title of National Collection Exhibition is uh, continu Continuities and Raptures. So here you can see the floor plan, the line of um, uh, continuities. Here is the line um, along which art style in Slovenia developed parallel to those in Western art. So you can see the meandric line is crossed by the line of ruptures on the bottom of the plan. That is the line of the avant-garde. From and this line of avant-garde, uh, goes from the 1950s, so the avant-garde from the 1920s, sorry, to the uh, art of the partisan resistance, you know, partisans from the Second World War, uh, fighting against the German, Italian, and other occup occup occupators, to the so these are some images from the, still from the partisan. And then the line of ruptures goes to the uh, conceptual art in the 60s with Oho group, and then to Neue Slovenische Kunst with Irwin Leibach, New Collectivism. Uh, so every one of uh, the artistic programs on this line, uh, line of, uh, in, uh, of um, ruptures, 
strove for a real life impact on its time and aspire to transform the local social context, breaking free of homogenizing Western styles. The pre-war avant-garde confronted the bourgeois art in their environment, while the avant-garde in the socialist period used their genuinely collective creativity to criticize surrounding contrived collectivism imposed by the governing ideology. Of all these avant-garde movements, the one that was the most emancipatory for society was partisan art. It served the goal of agitation. It lifted the moral of those fighting in the national resistance. It mobilized the creative potential of the masses. The decision to present partisan art in the frame of the 20th century art collection, however, has been criticized on the grounds that if we present the art of the partisans, we should also present the art of Weidgard, an anti-communist movement that collaborated with the occupying forces. Such emancipatory potential as partisans' art um, had is lacking in the art produced by, by the white guard, and for this reason, their art cannot be included in the line of ruptures. The expectation that a national collection should fairly and equally include all, or, all the diverse social and cultural movements of the society reflects the ideology of reconciliation exposed by certain intellectuals in Eastern Europe. But we should bear in mind the danger of equotic, emancipatory, and reactionary historical movements. At the Moderna Galleria, we understand that not all traditions are equally important for democratic museum. The democratization of the museum also does not mean the same thing everywhere. In places where the museum industry is highly developed, the rhetoric of democratizing the museum primarily serves the market logic of something for everyone. In Slovenia, as in many other countries, democratization is understood by some as an attempt to reconcile former enemies and by others as a way to relate to local emancipatory traditions. A truly democratic museum is a critical museum that does not so much aspire to some proportional representation of different social, political, or ideological groups but rather to deeper and more fundamental changes in the understanding of the museum. These changes demand that we, talk, that we take a stand. At times, this stand can be antagonistic or anything but, but conciliatory towards certain sociopolitical options. The critical museum takes the side of traditions that have historically proven to have emancipatory social potential. And on the basis of this allegiance, it builds strategies for combating the homogenizing processes of neoliberal society. The museum cannot equally represent all traditions and address all social groups, but what a new museum politics can do is draw a more equitable mental map of the world. The critical museum not only exhibits certain kinds of art, it also makes clear the reasons for and the consequences of the representation in the exhibitions and collections or their non-representation, their exclusion from the dominant art system, which is especially true of art from non-Western parts of the world. The critical museum exposes the hierarchy relations, hierarchy relation between different local histories, emphasizing that it is not enough to include local histories within the broader international histories. 
the museum must, must also show how these local histories have influenced the global sphere. The non-Western world cannot just be an object of research for Western world, especially it has always um, influenced worldwide processes, whether randomly or in organized uh, fashion, such as the non-alignment, sorry, non-alignment movement, uh, such as the non-alignment movement once did. At the moment, we have uh, in our museum the exhibition Southern Constellations, the Poetics of Non-Aligned, uh, which focuses on ideas, ideals, and principles of the movement, particularly in the connection with its cultural policies. At the same time, the exhibition places these ideas in contemporary context by asking, could, could there be a non-aligned uh, contemporaneity? And here are some images um, from the exhibition. And as you know, uh, or in Ljubljana in 1955, the uh, International Graphic Biennial was founded in our museum. And this is one of the uh, editions from 65. Important is to mention that also non-Western artists from all non-alignment countries participated. So, I go now to uh, the second, second, um, uh, second point of democratic museum. So the democratic museum is democratic not because it represents uh, diverse positions, but because it is in relation with different positions that have an active presence. So far, I have spoken about the museum in the post-socialist context using the example of the national collection uh, housed in Moderna Galeria's original building, which operate as a museum of 20th century modern art. Now I would like to say a few words about the idea of contemporaneity, which I associate with active presence. So I will show you uh, also some images from the Eastern Art Collection there. In, the, in our museum of contemporary art Metelkova, founded in 2011, to house and display the artist 2000 plus collection of Eastern European art, we have focused on interpreting what contemporary actually means as opposed to modern, that is to say that which is housed in our Museum of Modern Art. The separation between two entities, between the Museum of Modern and the Museum of Contemporary Art, is not defined by any strict temporal boundary. Although, roughly speaking, we are talking about the split between the 20th and 21st century. Rather, our main concern is conceptual distinction between the modern and the contemporary as between that which strives for progress and development and that which, is, which above all advocates for decolonialization from different dominant positions. This process of decolonialization could largely be cla classified under, also under the seven points of democratic museum I am discussing here. The principle of decolonialization is not specific only for the Museum of Contemporary Art, um, but also uh, can be found in the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, I'm talking about our two, of course, museums, where the line of ruptures uh, in our national collection displays relates to various emancipatory ideas. This line continues in the Museum of Contemporary Art Metelkova and could also be described as the line of contemporaneity that is not subject to the time we live. Because contemporaneity is something that I defined as the air of art traditions that were not only about the present, but also about active presence. The Museum of Contemporary Art Metelkova understands the notion of contemporary as both the present and presence. By the present, we mean the period we are living in while presence means taking an active position 
towards one's own time and space. Thus understood, the concept of contemporaneity does not refer only to our museum of contemporary art, but it is our general principle that covers both the museum of modern and the museum of contemporary art. Both of our museum units are thus characterized by a similar principle of the contemporary, consisting in constant redefining of the past, a search for something that can only be learned through a plurality of narratives and never through a single story. And this plurality of narratives is crucial for democratic museum. So here I have just some more uh, images from the contemporary Eastern art uh, collection. So the third point, the democratic museum is a place of parallel narratives that creates new complexities. An important tool in creating such pluralities is artistic uh, archives. And they are rough, uh, regularly included in our collection displays at the Museum of Contemporary Art Metelkova, the showing different approaches to historicization. So here you have, for example, the artist's archive, East Art Map by the group Irwin to, from 2002-2006, which is presented as a museum installation that uh, includes video documentation, the book East Art Map, and um, uh, the, the map, uh, uh, contemporary art and Eastern Europe, and a unified diagram in which artists are removed from their national frameworks. It actually presents the 20, uh, 20 years of Eastern European uh, art. Uh, it's an important artist archive. And the, the other archive, TV gallery, from 1981 to 1991, conceived by the curator and art historian Dunja Blažević in 1981 at Television Belgrade. Blažević began producing a monthly program called TV Gallery, which featured art videos as well as reporting on contemporary art. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 this archive, uh, proves that in the 80s, it means still in times of socialism, um, the national TV presented contemporary art in this kind of uh, uh, way, uh, which is not possible today. So it makes you think about these differences between the socialism and capitalism from a slightly different perspective. And this is another archive uh, included in our this display, the Punky Museum Archive, which is an autonomous project created by leading figures from the punk scene uh, of uh, from 1977 to 1987 and the public. And the other archive, so this is still the punk. So we sometimes also include in the in the display of, from our collection the previous exhib important exhibitions. Uh, done uh, and produced by Moderna Galleria. So that was the archive of the exhibition body and the East, the first exhibition on Eastern European art produced in 1989. And then uh, we were also very active in creating, co-creating the Museum of Solidarity for Sarajevo in 1960, uh, 19, uh, 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 1996. Uh, so this is the example of the uh, archive. And then um, in uh, 2018, one of the exhibition rooms at the Moderna Galleria, uh, at the Museum of Contemporary Art was given at the disposal of temporary Slovene dance archive, which was started by the independent theorist and historian of contemporary scenic art, Rock Weber, in his apartment. So it's a private archive. Most of the material 
transformed into the keeping of the museum, of our museum, concerns contemporary scenic arts, dance, and theater of the non-institutional scene over the past 20 years. The archive is on view and accessible on the first floor, where Weber also performs a live archive in progress, the archiving procedure from collecting, systematizing, to providing public accessibility. So all this is made visible in the, in the display of our collection. So the fourth, po the fourth po point, democratic museum is not a space of consensus, but a space of interference. The museum should create conditions in which nobody represents anybody uh, else. That is to say, where no one speaks in the name of another, but everyone speaks for themselves. It should create conditions in which interpretations and translations are the result of uh, concrete interference. So I will explain this uh, showing you the, um, I'm talking about the um, exhibition I curated uh, in our museum. Uh, the exhibition stop over one by one, one to one. Um, it was, in the, uh, it was meant to be in our museum. So in the context of um, stopover one-to-one, -one, uh, a group of artists unexpectedly, unexpectedly interfered in the work of another artist. The art project, Solida uh, Social Dress Power to the People by Maria Moitza Pungarchar, first exhibited at the Alcatraz Gallery in Metelkova City. So there are two parts of Metelkova, the former Yugoslav army barracks, one squatted by the activist artists in the beginning of the 90s and another belongs uh, to museum. So in the squatted place uh, surrounding, um, there is an Alcatraz gallery that uh, the exhibition was presented. And so it was meant that this exhibition would then be moved to our museum in slightly different version. But this never happened because the entire exhibition was stolen from the Alcatraz in few days before it was supposed to be moved to our museum. The exhibition at Alcatraz presented a collection of clothes and kitchen and household textiles that were made in a workshop where the artist taught sew sewing uh, to unemployed women, women. They embroidered their work with the slogans from the mass protest that had recently occurred throughout Slovenia. The workshop was held at the Rock Lab in Ljubljana, a kind of laboratory for a new program, the city planning for the abandoned bicycle factory Rock, which for a number of years now has been occupied by, uh, as a squad by various groups of artists and activists, as well as by the Rock Social Center that does a lot for refugees and so on. Uh, so this is this rock um, for former bicycle factory, and this is the rock lab, so the laboratory for the new uh, rock. All these uh, users, meaning artists, activists, and so on, who have invested a great deal of time and energy into this space are extremely critical of the city's plans, which are strongly connected with the creative industries. They are also angry that their presence at the factory was completely overlooked in the city plans. Pungarchar's installation at Alcatraz was stolen by a group of masked people who left a written message on the gallery floor. I quote, we will not be the back hole that tears down the rock. End of quotation. They later described what they did as a political performance. The action was followed by various statements from Alcatraz, from the artist herself, and from the museum of our museum as well, and uh, as a co-producer co of the project, as well as from many others. Most of these statements condemned the theft 
which, which was generally thought to have been carried out by activists um, from Rogue. Unable to present Pungarchar's uh, project as intended, we decided with the artist to present documentation about the stolen installation in our museum. Among other things, we included separate statements from the artist and from me as the curator of Stopover One to One. While the artist put herself in the position of victim, I tried to understand what ha had happened in the light of similar, similar anarchic art traditions as well as in the context of my own understanding of one-to-one -one art. Uh, one of the crucial characteristics uh, of one-to-one -one art is that it has a life of its own. Once it has been publicly presented, it can no longer be wholly controlled by the artist. This is something that any artist who produces one-to-one -one art must come to terms with. Another distinguishing trait of one-to-one -one art is its duration. Consequently, it is impossible to claim that the materialization, material realization of such project is more truly art than their processual and participatory character. So the question is, what was actually stolen here? We might say that what was stolen was, not, was only a minor part of the artwork, since the crucial part of the social dress project uh, is its participatory character. Pungerchar's uh, social dress project has in no way been destroyed by the theft. More precisely, the project has no, not been destroyed by the destruction of some of its material supports. Indeed, we might even say that it has acquired a new dimensions. Since the political performance at the Alcatraz Gallery has triggered discussions that are forcing us all to take a more clearly, clearly uh, defined position regarding the future of the old rock factory. Number five. The Democratic Museum strives to, for equal dialogue and partnership in the international sphere and thus producing new internationalism. So in 2010, in Ljubljana, uh, we initiated the project um, Internationale, uh, L'Internationale after the song, uh, which, has, uh, which has since developed in a transnational confederation of uh, the museum, um, in the two Spanish museum, Reina Sofia in, in Madrid, uh, Magba Barcelona, Van Abe Museum, uh, Merca Antwerp, um, uh, Museum of Modern Art, Warsaw, South Istanbul, and Moderna Galleria. So the seven museums are independent entities joined in community based on common visions and interests, so, uh, interest, solidarity, and a commitment to the commu common good. Along with various specific projects developed as initiatives by individual partners and involving collaborations with collections and archives, there is a new sense of commonality that inter Internationale is sharing with many potential partners around the world. As a result, Internationale is becoming a partner on an even broader horizontal front with locally rooted and globally connected um, cultural organizations of different statuses and fields, all sharing the conviction that society and its institutions must be radically transformed. Number six, the Democratic Museum is the constituent museum. So in, um, these are books we, for example, produced together, and one is about the Constituent uh, Museum. Uh, in Internationale, we talk about horizontal collaboration. Uh, this goes beyond collaborating with experts and artists and primarily means giving the public an, an active position in the processes of knowledge production. In the 1990s, after the fall of the Iron Curtain and with globalization and computerization of the world, we suddenly faced a new reality that our existing knowledge system could no longer easily cope with. 
What would be the right museum model for this new situation where the art world too had become bigger than ever before? In this situation, museums had two options. Either expand their collection with art from all over the world and start accumulating knowledge related to this art in their books and databases, or radically transform themselves. This means changing the museum's own existing model, which is based on symbolic representation and accumulation. In Internationale, we decided to start building a new model of the transnational museum, which we call the Constituent Museum. This is a museum based on solidarity, sh shared expertise, collaboration, and co-working with plural communities in Europe and elsewhere. The museum in Internationale do not want to merely represent the world, but rather we inspire to empower those who are traditionally the passive objects of museum activities, public of different geographical gender, race, class, and expertise backgrounds. Its constituents are members of various local communities, Museum, visitors, artists, theorists, scholars, activists, historians, environmentalists, and numerous other segments of interested public. Internationale has made the development of the constituent museum one of its main goals. We seek to develop such a museum with our, with our constituents, primarily through joint work and learning. That is to say, through praxis, rather than by refer, uh, referencing already pre-existing organized knowledge. So number seven, the democratic museum gives space to different narrators who are present in their stories. Among, um, so these are just some images for, from different collaborative, collaborative projects. So the number seven uh, focuses on different narrators. Among um, the international projects that aspire to extend the horizontal cultural front beyond our confederation of seven museums, there is the glossary of common knowledge. The glossary serves as a kind of platform for translating between different social, political, and cultural contexts. Unlike other kinds of translation between different contexts, in the glossary project, this happens through the active participation of narrators who are physically present at seminars. The seminars are devoted to different referential fields, such as historicization, geopolitics, subjectivization, other institutionality, the commons, and constituencies. At a seminar, each narrator presents a term that, in their view, best describes the given referential field. The referential fields are essentially umbrella terms, which in many cases come from art world jargon, and the narrators, with their own particular terms, give them a more individual and contextualized understanding. A term proposed by a narrator enters a process of discussion, a kind of collective editing through which it may be altered or at least made clearer. The title narrator is connected with oral history, that is, histories that have not yet been written down, at least not in the way histories have been written for those who have power over the written word. We are not speaking about some dichotomy between voice and the written word here. word here. After all, the terms that are proposed are themselves informed with the same contemporary alienation of language. The narrator's voice is not the authentic voice, but rather a voice set in constant tension with other voices as well as with writing. 
Returning the body to language does not mean restoring the original source of language, but rather treating language as a social practice. So the, 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 in the post-socialist world, the truly democratic museum can only be a museum that strives to read off its post labels. A museum that not only seeks a, a society of solidarity in the past, but also develops a new way of comradeship suitable for our own times. A community that is more than just a network of common interests, but also builds on friendship and shared ethics. An ethical stance that transcends class, gender, racial, and geopolitical di divides. The Democratic Museum is a space for the alternative production of subjectivities, which resists technological surveillance and develop a planetary alliance. Thank you. Can you hear me? I heard the name of the Kim Gyeong-un. 어, 발제를 너무 어, 인상 깊게 잘 들었습니다. 우선은 그이 심포지엄의 제목에서부터 조금 얘기를 시작해 보고 싶은 생각이 드는데요. 어, 일단은 한글로 뭐 미술관은 무엇을 움직이는가라고 타이틀이 되어 있고 그 영어로는 이제 change라는 단어가 쓰여져 있는데 어, 통역사 분께서는 사실 움직이는가라는 단어에 change뿐만이 아니라 이렇게 뭔가를 움직이게 만든다라는 의미가 들어 있다는 무브의 의미가 있다는 거를 좀 예, 설명을 해 주시면 좋을 것 같고. 그래서 미술관이 뭔가를 움직인다라는 게 굉장히 낯선 표현일 수 있는데 근데 사실은 그런 일이 실제로 가끔 일어나기도 하는 것 같습니다. 왜냐하면 지금 저희가 앉아 있는 이 서울관이라는 공간이 어뭐이 많은 한국 분들은 이미 알고 계시리라고 생각합니다만은 어 사실은 10여 년 전만 해도 어, 미술관이 아니고 어, 기무사라고 불리는 그 전에는 이제 보안사였죠. 그래서 말하자면 이제 군부 정권의 아, 비밀스러운 어떤 권력기관이 자리에 있던 곳이었습니다. 근데 그 기무사가 이전한 자리에 들어서 있고 사실은 이 건물이 있는 그 근처는 실제로는 국군 서울지구병원이 있었던 자리고. 어, 그 병원이 지금 현재는 그옛 교원 소청 심사위원회 저쪽 이제 언덕 위에 가시면 있는데 그쪽 자리로 이전이 되어 있죠. 그러니까 사실은 기무사와 국군 서울 지구 병원을 움직인 자리에 미술관이 들어와 있습니다. 그래서 미술관이 때로는 뭔가를 움직이기는 하죠. 예, 실제로 움직이는 경우가 있어가지고 그래서 이제 뭐 타이틀에 대해서 조금 설명을 드리고 지나가고 싶다는 생각이 들었고 사실은 이제 그 도심 한 가운데 도대체 뭐가 있을지 알수 없는 그런 블랙홀 같은 공간처럼 조, 존재를 하고 있었거든요 이 공간이 어, 담 너머에 군인들이 서 있는 걸 누구나 다 인지는 하고 있지만 그 안을 들여다본 적은 없는 그런 공간이었습니다만은 지금 현재는 이제 누구든지 접근 가능하고 어, 누구에게나 잠재적으로 이제 개방되어 있는 공공의 장소가 되었다는 그 사실 자체가 사실은 한국의 민주주의 역사에 있어서 좀또 하나의 중요한 좀 상징적인 대목이기도 합니다. 그걸 조금 예, 맥락을 좀 설명을 드리고 싶었고 어, 지금 이제 류블라냐 현대미술관의 사례를 들어주셨습니다. 사실 류블라냐라고 할때 우리하고는 굉장히 이제 먼 지역처럼 느껴지지만 아까 그 발표 중에서 류블라나 국제 파나 비엔날레 어, 인터내셔널 어, 그래픽 아트 비엔날레에 대해서 잠깐 설명을 해주셨는데 사실 몇년 전에 과천관에서 큰 회고전을 가지셨던 그 황규백 작가 판화 작가로서 저명한 작가 분이신데 그분이 이제 7, 80년대에 사실 리블라나 판화 비엔날레에 참여하셔서 수상한 기록도 있고 해서 사실은 슬로베니아하고 우리의 관계가 나름대로는 또 인연이 있는 관계여서 이제 좀 감회가 깊은 발표였던 것 같습니다. 그 발제의 내용에서 굉장히 인상 깊었던 부분이 어, 민주주의라는 단어가 얼마나 오남용 될수 있는가 하는 부분이었는데요. 어, 제가 이제 드릴 질문도 그 부분하고 관련이 있는데 
어, 사실 사회주의라는 단어와 전체주의라는 단어가 동의어가 아니고 또 자본주의라는 단어와 민주주의라는 단어가 동의어가 아니다 라는 부분이 굉장히 인상 깊었습니다. 그래서 그런 그 개념을 정확하게 가슴 속에 새겨두고 어, 우리가 많은 현상들을 바라봐야 될 거다라는 생각을 했었고 어, 민주주의라는 단어 역시도 굉장히 오남용되는 사례가 많죠. 아까 발표 첫머리에 잠깐 다뤄졌지만 어, 지구상에서 가장 민주주의하고는 조금 거리가 멀다고 생각하는 그 민주주의 인민공화국에서도 사실은 민주주의라는 단어를 쓰고 있지 않습니까? 어, 그래서 어, 이거하고 관련된 질문을 조금 드리고 싶습니다. 사실은 어, 관장님도 그 필드에서 어, 굉장히 여러 해 동안 실무의 경험을 가지고 계신 분이시고 저도 어, 뭐 나름의 세월 동안 실무 경험을 가지고 있는 바이기 때문에 사실은 어, 굉장히 어, 추상적이고 일반적인 가치 수호에 관한 질문일 수도 있지만 또 어떻게 보면 우리가 일하면서 늘상 마주치게 되는 아주 실무적인 딜레마일 수도 있습니다. 사실 이 민주주의에 대해서 많은 사람들이 서로 다른 정의를 가지고 있고 다른 의미로 사용하는 것 같습니다. 그래서 어, 때로는 이제 민주화라는 단어가 뭐 이렇게 문턱 낮추기나 아니면 친근함이나 뭐 이런 어, 뭐 대중 뭐 이렇게 뭐 이런 수사학이나 단어들하고 결부가 되면서 이렇게 아까 발, 발제 중에서 잠깐 언급하셨던 것처럼 미술관에 찾아오는 이들을 그저 고객이나 소비자로 환원시키고 이러한 고객 내지는 소비자의 수요에 부응하는 데에만 초점을 맞추는 어떤 시장 친화적인 정책 이런 거를 가식적으로 좀 포장하는 데 동원되기도 하는 것 같습니다. 물론 이런 접근 방식의 그 순수한 민주적 가치 수호를 하고자 하는 의도가 전혀 뭐 1%도 없다라고 배척할 수는 없다고 생각을 합니다. 근데 어, 발제자께서 어, 말씀하신 발표를 들어보면 사실은 뭐 그냥 무조건적인 이렇게 포스트 모던한 상대주의는 결코 옳지 않다. 우리는 어떤 입장을 취해야만 한다. 아, 라고 어, 그런 입장을 가지고 계신 것 같은데 그렇다면 은 이러한 그 시장 친화적인 어떤 그 민주화의 수사학을 말하자면 시장 친화적인 태도로 이렇게 포장하려는 태도와 어, 실제적으로 순수하게 민주주의적인 가치를 수호하고자 하는 태도 사이를 어떻게 보면 좀 명쾌하게 판별해낼 수 있는 굉장히 좀 어, 아주 쉬운 실무적인 비법, 비결이 있지 않을까 그런 의문이 좀 들었습니다. 그래서 혹시 그런 어, 나름의 비결 같은 걸 가지고 계실지 그런 부분이 처음 드는 질문이었습니다. Uh, thank you very much. It's a, it's a crucial question. It's very important. Um, you know, all the uh, values that were, for example, most of them produced in the 60s, like, uh, you know, free creativity, um, collaboration. Um, um, so th those, those values we know um, Uh, have been co-opted by the uh, capitalism. Also, the the the, uh, the concept of authenticity, for example, you know. So nobody believes today uh, in authenticity anymore. Although there are many like authentic authentic products <laughs> around us. So the same uh, goes uh, with democracy. You know, nobody uh, like I remember in socialism. You know, in the seventies, um, eight. When I was young, um, actually nobody believed in socialism anymore, and we all pretended, you know, to believe. And I see today we all pretend to believe in democracy, uh, although we know uh, that it became tool for the, also for the most ag aggressive uh, interventions, um, wars, and so on. Uh, so I think that one of the most important uh, tasks uh, of the museum today is this um, um, uh, bringing, bringing back the values that were stolen to us, to people. And this is um, also the value of democratic museum. Um, so we know that The art jargon today is full of very leftist um, expressions and that we all use the same, like common, you know, collaboration, participation. So th all these words are very fashionable, 
So also in the in the not, not only you know on the side of the capital, but also in among us uh, as well, um, we are different. You know, some of us are more sincere in what we are doing. For example, in the idea of democratization, some are mostly doing their careers, but we are all using the same language. So how to differentiate? How to you know to whom to believe? Uh, this is the question, and I I think that the only way to to uh, differentiate between the fake and the authentic uh, democratic museum is to to see how 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 precise and consequent uh, it it work is. So if the rhetoric of the museum is very like liberal, very you know, uh, caring, taking care about um, the different marginalized groups, um, migrants, and so on. And at the same time, you have in the board of the museum um, um, a person who deals uh, with weapon or who 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 possesses private prisons that where that same refugees that are presented in the exhibition rooms are kept, then you can't believe that museum. So I think that, you know, in, in one institution, you, you, ha you can have very schizophrenic situation. And when you have it, you know, then this is not democratic museum. So you have to be precise and consequent in all uh, all the um, activities th that are on the, the stage and behind the stage. So there shouldn't be the difference between what you do, you know, like a, a manager, administra administrator, director of the museum, and a curator that, um, that fights for the very, you know, um, advanced ideas. 네, 감사합니다. 어, 이번에도 조금 이제 실무적인 <웃음> 차원의 질문이 될수 있을 것 같은데 제가 워낙 실무자이다 보니까 그런 의문이 많이 들어서요. 그 아까 그 L 인터내셔널에 대해서 설명을 하실 때그 수평적 협력의 어떤 이상을 어, 추구하는 어, 미술관들의 연대의 사례로 말씀을 해주셨는데 어, 사실 저희가 한국 사회에서 이제 일을 하다 보면은 수평적 협력이라는 게 얼마나 정말 도달하기 어려운가라는 경험하고 많이 맞닥뜨리게 됩니다. 어, 좀 한국적인 설명을 드리자면 사실 뉴욕 타임스에서도 어, 소개가 된 적이 있다고 하는데 갑질이라는 단어가 있거든요. 근데 사실 한국 사회에서는 이제 그 계약 주체 간에 계약 관계를 맺을 때 갑을 설정하는 것에서부터 시작을 하거든요. 근데 이 갑을이라는 것은 필연적으로 상대적인 우열 관계를 반영을 할 수밖에 없는 그런 계약 구조를 가지고 있습니다. 그래서 사실은 한국에서의 계약은 어느 쪽이 상대적 우위에 서고 어느 쪽이 상대적 열 위에 서느냐를 정리하는 데서부터 사실은 시작된다고 볼 수가 있는데 그런 문화가 사실은 수평적 협력이라는 것을 굉장히 이상적인 가치에 불과하게 만드는 그런 측면도 있습니다. 근데 이 실제로 이 인터내셔널을 꾸리시면서 이런 그 어쨌든 인간의 관계에서는 완벽하게 동등한 혹은 완벽하게 그 어떤 힘의 균형이라는 게 똑같이 잡히기는 어려울 거라고 생각되고 기관 사회에도 약간씩은 어 조금 이제 좋은 여건과 나쁜 여건의 차이가 있을 거라고 생각합니다. 그러면 그 필연적으로 어 약간 우위의 선 쪽은 조금 자기가 손해 보는 것 같고 또 약간 열위의 선 쪽은 뭐 자존심이 상하는 경우도 생기고 그래서 서로가 이렇게 억울할 수밖에 없는 상황이 생기는 경우가 굉장히 빈번한데 어, 그런 부분들을 어떻게 잘 헤쳐나가실 수 있었는지 그런 부분들이 좀 궁금합니다. 예. Um, so it's um, um, of course the horizontal uh, collaboration is uh, an ideal that we strive for. It's um, it's it's of course not uh, possible to completely realize it because of our legislation, because of uh, you know if you want in work internationally, because of the very diverse conditions of work. Uh, 
and uh, so on. But what can museum do is to activate, you know, an idea and a project projects that serve at least as a, as, a, as a laboratory for horizontal collaboration. So in our case, in our confederation of the museums, we, we, we are, for example, uh, preparing different projects, and then we invite to collaborate with us different people of uh, different backgrounds, uh, not only art historians, but also scientists, activists, uh, different marginalized groups, bloggers, you know, technology here has a very important role. So they are included in different stages of the preparation to the project. And one of it, the examples is also glossary of common knowledge. So in the glossary, you know, my idea of uh, international uh, from the beginning was um, that it was too European in a way, you know, so if it's too European, it can't be uh, horizontal in terms of, let's say, transnational uh, collaboration. So I think that with the glossary, we, we connect, corrected a little bit this, and we included so-called global family when we invite people from very different, uh, you know, uh, contexts from all over the world to participate in the uh, same pro uh, process. I think this co-working is very important. That you, you know, you are not doing something, a project that would present on symbolic uh, level the other, but you invite people to work with you, actually. So this co-working and practice is very important in the, um, the horizontal uh, collaboration. Uh, I think this can be something that can activate the path to, the, to, the, to, to, the, to more horizontality. 어, 이번 질의 토론 시간 여기서 마무리하는 걸로 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.